Good to go? Uh, sure. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jatian Chen from University IT, um, and with, I'm with the Office of Digital Accessibility. And um, this is a sneak peek at Site Improve, our new accessibility scanning tool. Um, along with other services. And um, I have here with me Nick Delman from Site Improve and Brie Clements from Site Improve to help me uh, introduce Site Improve to everyone. So um, these slides are actually also available on the webcam agenda. Um, should be linked. Let me know, Cynthia, if that's not working. But we'll, we'll go through Site Improve's features very quickly today for you to just get a look at it because we just started this. <laughs> Next page where we got it. Okay, so um, the agenda for today is we're just going to talk briefly about the Stanford Dig Office of Digital Accessibility, the services, and then we'll go launch right into the new Site Improve service um, and its features, and give and hopefully we'll have some time at the end for some question um, questions from you. So um, I've I've been at Stanford for mm, a, I think it's coming on to six years now. Um, I am, I was the, I am, I was still the program manager for the, um, accessibility. So we, um, our office has changed names. It used to be Stanford Online Accessibility Program. It's now changed to Stanford Office of Digital Accessibility. And it has also moved from university communications to university IT. Um, our services are still the same. It's <laughs> still the same people. Um, my, my team has expanded. Um, we now have a director, Sean Keegan, and um, two consulting engineers, Claire um, O'Keefe and Kevin Murphy. So our services include things where we will do any kind of consulting about accessibility from you. So it could be any kind of technical coding issues or um, design considerations. It could also be what to do with the policy. And um, if you want to buy something, you want to outsource um, contracts uh, outsource to contractors or you want to buy a software, um, we'll do, we, we're here to help you work through the process and how to think about it and do some checkings for you. Um, and the, the, the kind of testing that we do, um, we will do anything on, on um, a website, site design, um, any kind of vendor products, um, we'll check your documents. And um, we'll also uh, even check your design docs. I and mean, if you have a um, Wireframe, we can still talk through you know, what are the considerations necessary. Uh, we have a op weekly office hours, so it's half an hour block. Um, so it's linked in there. Feel free to sign up if you have any questions. Any questions? Uh, you want to do any testing on talk through um, the, pro the thought process with there. And um, the accessibility trainings, we have new websites. The accessibility trainings are coming up um, very soon. And the biggest thing that we've changed, uh, we've, uh, we've um, moved to is we've moved um, to a new site scanning service. And uh, we used to be running Level Access's accessibility management platform, which is AMP, um, since, tw since April. So at the beginning of the month, we've signed a contract <laughs> with Site Improve. And so we're migrating uh, the site scans over to Site Improve. It's um, we're still keeping we're still using AMP in the back of the house. We found that it was a lot more technical than what people are comfortable with. So the focus is actually on more um, content accessibility, which Site Improve is a better fit. We actually came up. We actually did a big RFP about on this, and um, we've invited um, what did I write here. We've invited five vendor to bid for the for the product uh, for for the service, and um, we tapped everyone camp across campus, about 20, 20 odd stakeholders, to try to make the decision, and um, and we 
it was an objective scorecard where there was six criteria, you know, authentication, um, automated spidering, um, the rule sets, the, how, they how the results are evaluated, uh, how the results are um, displayed and um, permissions and um, user experience. And the, num and the plus one that I've written there, the other criteria-ish in quotes is the, all the different types of additional packages that came with the service. And um, the group decided that site improve um, is the one that they like best. So that's why we went with it. So I'll roll out, since I, I told you I just we just started in the beginning of all April, uh, we're going to do some configurations and then we're going to onboard the big, the big sites, the, um, the major schools and units. And then um, we're going through to get catch, get the other public sites. And after that, there will be the various different types of integrations and um, internet scannings and reportings and so on. That's there, there will be all separate projects afterwards. And all throughout this process, um, somewhere once we start onboarding people, we'll start scheduling for training courses, training on how to use Site Improve as we move along each of the uh, move move along with each of the units. So. Just to let you know, we're just at the, tippy, <laughs> the very beginning <laughs> of the system configuration. We're just starting there. Um, the You may sign up for, we got SSO working, so you may sign up for uh, accounts at studyimprove.stanford.edu. Um, it might be a blank um, dashboard right now since we're still trying to get it set up, but um, I will look through the, your names and contact you if you're interested and find out more about your sites if you want to sign up now. All right, so now I'm going to pass it on to Nick and Bree to um, tell you more about their features. Great. Thank you, Jatian, for the intro. Um, I'm glad to be with everyone today. My name is Nick Dahlman. I'm a senior customer success manager over here at Site Improve. And as Jatian mentioned, we're in like the very beginning stages right now of the larger uh, rollout over at Stanford. So uh, you're probably going to be hearing a lot more from me in the future. If you're going to be keeping in touch with Site Improve, we're going to be doing a number of different trainings that are much more in depth than we're going today. So today is going to be a very uh, kind of basic uh, walkthrough on just high level. What is Site Improve and what can we get excited for? I stopped sharing. So Nick, go ahead and share your screen. Oh, perfect. I'll just let Bree introduce herself and I think we can actually go right into the platform then. Absolutely. It's nice to meet everyone. I'm Brie Clements. I've been with Site Improve for nearly four and a half years, and Nick and I work exclusively with higher ed. So how you might be able to leverage me going forward is just hearing from all the different peers into understanding what they're doing to improve their digital experience when it comes to their website, and I'll be able to help provide any insight on additional services that are outside of your package. Great. And Without further ado, I'm going to pull up our dashboard here. Can I get some thumbs up if everyone's okay to see this all right? Perfect. So as Jatian mentioned, we do have single sign-on up and running. So if you're interested in getting um, into the system early, um, you are able to get your account set up. Once we're getting your site scanning, this is what you can expect to see when you get into Site Improve for the first time on one of your sites. So basically what we do is we start at the home page of your site we and we crawl it similar to how a search engine would so we're going to find every link across the site that is linked uh, naturally across the site and we're going to ingest that information report it back into these different modules to help you improve your site across a lot of these different areas so the primary focus that we're going to be talking about today is accessibility. So I'm gonna showcase how you can use the tool to find accessibility issues and fix them. But part of what we're doing with Site Improve too is there's some other insights that you can review as well to improve your content quality, search engine optimization. So we're gonna do a very quick sneak peek at just high level how the system works today. Um, what's kind of included with the base package for Stanford. I'm going to then pass it over to Bree to talk a little bit more about what else you can do with Site Improve if you want to take things to the next level. And then there should be some time at the end for some questions. So I'm going to go into the accessibility tool here. And essentially what we're doing here is we're going to be giving your site a score 
from zero to 100, telling you out of issues that can be tested with technology like Site Improve, how well are we doing? So I actually have the giving site pulled up right now, and this site is doing very well right out of the gate. We can see that the site is scoring a 91.9 .9 out of 100, which is fantastic. A lot of sites that we scan for the first time are closer to like the 60, 70. So this site is looking very good. And if we're wondering how does my site look compared to other sites that might be similar to mine, Site Improve provides some industry benchmarking too. So we can actually see out of other education sites that Site Improve is scanning, what do those look like on average? So not only does the score look good, but it's also telling me that the average score that Site Improve is scanning is an 84.5 out of 100. So very great to see there. What you can then do with Site Improve is go into some of these different reports to learn about how you can increase that score and find important issues on the site to fix. So if we go into this issues page here, it's going to give us a very detailed list of all the different accessibility problems that we're seeing on our site. So these can be a variety of different flavors. Some of them can be very easy fixes. It might be you added an image that doesn't have appropriate alternative text, or it could be something having to do with your heading structure on a page, or these could be much more difficult fixes. So there could be something that might be a larger site-wide problem with the templates that we can help you find. So what you can really use these reports to do is look at your list of outstanding issues and see how many pages are these found on? Um, what's an average difficulty of the issue that I'm looking at here if I don't know what all of these are right out of the gate? And what's the conformance level? So the standard that's kind of the globally accepted standards for web accessibility is called the WCAG guidelines. And there's a few different conformance levels for those, which are A, AA, and AAA. A is your most important category of issues. They're either the most severe or they're affecting the highest volume of people. As we move into AA and AAA, the issues are getting a little bit more granular. So our goal is to give you what we're finding. You can then use these reports to figure out what do I want to focus on first and really work to improve the accessibility across the site. Now what Site Improve can also let you do is really take that next step into here as well. So if we wanted to click into a certain issue to read more about the problem and then see which specific pages the problem is on, you can do so. All of the pages that you're going to find in these reports in Site Improve are something that you can click and you can actually go out to our page report and it will actually take you to your version of the page and if it is something that's visible on the front end, we will highlight where that problem is for you. So you can see what the problem is and where do I need to go to fix this? Especially with accessibility, sometimes the problems are a little bit more behind the scenes type of things with the templates. So in that case, you can always dive into the code to see where the problem is. But again, the goal for Site Improve is we're just helping you find these issues that normally we wouldn't know are on our site or it's very hard to find them. If we're dealing with a large site, we'll get you into the page to show where that problem is in effort to fix those. We also try to tailor our reports for all different knowledge levels. So if we're looking at this and we're like, I have no clue what this is. I don't know how to fix this. You can read more about why these issues are in the reports. And we even provide some code examples that you can dive into. So if we're not sure how to actually fix this, you can go in here and look at a few different recommended ways that you can uh, put that accessible code on the website. Uh, a couple other things that Site Improve is doing from an accessibility standpoint, we are scanning your PDF documents too. So we're actually going inside of documents that you have posted on the site and looking for common accessibility problems inside the documents too. And uh, it's a similar type of format where you can go into the documents and see where those problems are found to there. So that's just a very quick sneak peek on accessibility. Again, um, for those of you that are going to be sticking around and being part of our larger rollout here at Stanford for Site Improve, you're probably going to be hearing from me quite a bit more. We're going to be doing some in-depth sessions. We're going to be making some custom dashboards for you guys so you can actually figure out 
you know, if I'm brand new to this and I don't know what to do to start, what are some easy issues I could focus on first? So we're gonna really ramp this up and try to get as many people in here as possible and try to make this as easy for everyone to use depending on what your abilities are on the website. Now, the other insights that you can find with Site Improve besides just the accessibility piece, a great kind of entryway into Site Improve is our quality assurance tool. This is kind of our elementary like 101 type of tool. So a lot of times when we onboard new users into Site Improve, this is kind of the first place they go. Uh, quality assurance will help you find where there's broken links and misspelled words on your site. So pretty basic. Um, I was going to show a couple examples of those on this site, but there actually are not any broken links or misspellings. So nothing to show here, but um, you can go into each of these reports to find where those problems are found, very similar to that flow that we would do with accessibility. Also in this QA tool, there's a full content inventory. So again, when we're scanning your site, we're taking a full living, breathing catalog of what you have out there. So this can be really helpful if we need to track down a certain page, or let's say we needed to run an audit on our site of all of the email addresses, maybe someone uh, changed their last name or isn't with Stanford, we need to find and replace or remove where their information is. We catalog everything for you in here and make it really easy for you to find where certain uh, words, phrases, um, contact information is found across the site and everything in Site Improve is very easy to export to. So a lot of times we have customers go in here and say, you know, I need to pull a export of all the documents that are found on my site. We can go in here, grab these reports and pull them out of Site Improve into CSV files. So try to make it easy for you to take this out of Site Improve if we need to share this with non-users too. And then the remaining tools that you can also take advantage of, we have a policy tool. This is kind of like a custom QA type of tool. So a lot of times with Site Improve, it's us giving you recommendations for what to fix. With policy, you can actually go in here and create custom policies. So if there's, you know, let's, let's say we wanted to look for any time that we had the word Stanford on the site, but maybe someone forgot to include the T. So it said Sanford, and that wasn't caught with a, a misspelling check. You can create your own policies in here to look for any word or phrase that you want. You can look for media files, documents, pretty much anything on the site. So this is kind of like that inventory tool, but a little bit more custom where you can go in here, tell Site Improve what you want us to find for you, and then we'll return results for what we found and where those problems are located. There's also a search engine optimization tool. So for those of you that are aware of what SEO is, this is basically the practice of making sure that our site can be found easily by search engines like Google. We wanna make sure that we're ranking high and that we're designing our site to ensure that as many search engines as possible can find it. And when the search engines do come to the site, we don't want them running into roadblocks or running out of steam. We want the search engine to fully index our site so we can rank as high as possible and organic search rankings. A lot of times there's actually some crossover between SEO and accessibility. So common SEO problems might be um, you have images that don't have alt text or uh, you have blank headings on a page. Uh, a lot of times when you improve the site from an SEO standpoint, you are making your website more accessible too. So a lot of times when customers work to make accessibility improvements or SEO improvements or vice versa, it will actually improve your scores, bigger picture across site improve. Now I'm gonna go back to the slide deck here and there's some information I wanted to share on integrations and then I'm gonna pass things over to Bree to take things over. But last thing I wanted to mention is Everything we looked at today is what you can find in Site Improve. So if you used your um, Stanford ID, log into Site Improve, all this information is available for you. But you can take this information out of Site Improve, similar to those uh, CSV exports, but you can actually connect Site Improve to some of the tools that you use too. So for those of you that are on WordPress, Drupal, we have plugins where you can actually have a little Site Improve icon sitting in WordPress or Drupal open that up when you're on a page and it will give you these insights right when you're in your CMS system. So that way you don't have to go to Site Improve to get the insights, we bring them to you. 
Uh, one thing that we're going to be setting up on as many sites as possible are these shortcut links, which is called CMS deep linking in Site Improve. So when I was on that page report a second ago and it was showing this page has this problem, we can actually put shortcut links to your CMS in Site Improve to get you to those pages quicker. There is an API that you can leverage if you need to take insights out of Site Improve and build your own types of reports. We've seen customers do really exciting things with those. And then there's some other different connectors that you can install too. So uh, like Power BI, Tableau for reporting, marketing automation. So if you build landing pages with HubSpot, Pardot, Marketo, we can automatically crawl those pages for your sites as well. And then same goes for task management. So a lot of our customers use Jira for their task management system. You could actually make Jiras from Site Improve into your own board to save time. So just something to keep in mind. This is really one of the ways that you can take Site Improve to that next level. And I'm going to pass things over to Bree to talk a little bit more about additional insights you can get out of Site Improve with our growth package and our protection packages. Thanks, Nick. And if you want to go to the next slide, that would be great. So when we're thinking about our growth package, it's really thinking about how do we drive more visitors to the site and help their digital experience every aspect. So the first is really understanding insights into your paid efforts, helping get traffic, traffic get there organically, and then understanding what their experience is like when they get to that page. So making sure that page loads in an efficient manner, and then understanding the behavior of visitors' actions when they get to the site. Are they taking the different calls to action that you hoped, or are they taking a different direction? So when we're thinking about ads, we'll be able to give you insight into your Google search ads. And so how this works is we have an API from Google ads to site improve. And then some of the key benefits that some of our other customers have experienced with this is they've been really able to improve their return on ad spend. So that way they're able to reallocate funds from one ad effort to another. And we're also able to give you insight on any conversion blockers and help you stay ahead of competitors when you're in that bidding process. When we're thinking about analytics, that's really giving you some more insight that's easy to understand. So that way your team is empowered to start to make decisions using this data. So how this works is our JavaScript is placed on your site and that way we're able to collect information on what your visitors are doing. This is also really helpful during any type of redesign process, especially as you're trying to understand the behavior of visitors and what they may or may not be doing across the website. Another aspect to the growth package is understanding how you rank organically and trying to improve that ranking. So we have a partnership with SEMrush and we also have some of our own proprietary data. And some of the key benefits that we've heard from customers is really being able to tie this back to the ROI of some of their digital marketing efforts and then also stay ahead of competitors when they're in those rankings by giving some of these additional insights. The last piece to the uh, growth package is performance. This has really been a hot topic across higher ed, especially with the Google Core Web Vitals update coming out in June. So we create different simulated visitor profiles. So you can actually understand what visitors experiences like from their location, their device and their network. And then you can choose the frequency of how often you want us to ping the site. And then that way we're able to actually show you what their loading experience is like and then give you an asset map that plays back and shows you how that page is being built and then gives you recommendations on understanding how you can improve page load time. A common culprit that you're probably all familiar with are images that are too big. And so that's an easy one for teams to start to work on and improve. So now when we're thinking about trying to minimize risk for the university, for your websites and your visitors, then we're starting to think about our protection package that includes data privacy and web security. So data privacy has been really helpful for larger higher ed institutions because they have a lot of different sites that exist and a lot of different stakeholders that can create those sites at any point in time. And this has been really helpful when they've been trying to get more information on personal sensitive data, as well as managing their cookies. And this has just helped them have better track of any potential vulnerabilities. 
And then the last piece is web security. This is the latest addition to the site improved platform. And this is really great for any web or security teams to get more insight into any additional vulnerabilities and really start to understand how you can communicate with other departments to ensure that you have very good cyber health. All right, thank you both Bree and Nick. Um, we are at 12.56 right now, um, so I want to let people know that uh, we, we will be available to answer any questions, so you can email me if you have additional questions. You have to leave and you have additional questions, just pick me. Uh, my contact information is shown on the slide, it's jatian at stanford.edu. And our new site is also listed as well. All right. Thank you, so, Jessica. Um, any questions? Yep. Um, yeah, people can feel free to hang out. This is our last session for today. Um, so, you know, if you have to hop off, it, I hope you got something great out of this morning because there were several good ones already. But um, we will be kicking off again tomorrow for um, the welcome and then a really cool uh, State of the UX at Stanford um, at 10 o'clock. So have a great day, everyone. <laughs>